spectator sport. No, it's a virtue. Are you wearing my mum's dressing gown? Yeah, no, I can explain. Um, he didn't do anything. He's been wrongly accused. OK. Yeah, I'll talk to the police. Did they wreck it? Do I need to come and tidy it up? OK. All right. Thanks. Cheers, bye. Everything all right? They had a viewing on my dad's flat last night. Young couple with a baby. They were loving it, you know, talking colour schemes and everything. Guess what happens next? The police rock up with a warrant, start turning the place upside down. Can't imagine that helped very much. Did they find anything? Yeah. Yeah, they found a full confession. Who do you think he was, Todd, eh? The penguin? They found a poisoned umbrella. Did they find anything? I take it the young people withdrew their interest, then. Well, the police were only doing their job, though, weren't they? Don't push it, Todd. They're closing ranks over there. Kylie, Sarah. They know David did it. And I think you know, too. Is there any need? Look at me, then! Trying to find the yoghurt. Why are you protecting the plot? I'm not protecting anyone. Boys. Boys, let Todd get his yoghurt. I understand your frustration, we all do, but you've got to calm down. Hey, patience. The police will get there in the end. They overreacted. I've been such a fool. Why did I storm out? Storming out's easy, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I took the easy option. I mean, staying, talking, that's hard, but storming out. Anyone can storm out. How was last night? I tried to stay up reading. Read the same page about 300 times. Oh, I hate that. What were you reading? National Enquirer. Still, I bet Carla's bed was dead comfy, wasn't it? <laughs> was that him? Hello? Do I look all right? Perfect. Now, you need to answer the questions honestly and you need to stay calm. I bet that copper lays it on thick. He forced me into it. I was that riled up. I know, but you're sorry now, aren't you? And you know that that was wrong of you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, all right, thanks. See you later. Bye. Who was it? Removal men. I'm on the way to pick up Carla's furniture. Well, most of it, anyway. Mm. And goes the comfy bed then. No, she's leaving that in case she rents the flat out. I thought she was selling it. Spent the morning boxing up her stuff. Mm. Tables going, chairs are going, telly's going. The telly? No way. Mm. What am I gonna eat off? What am I gonna watch? Oh, Michelle, just go home. I can't just go home. But I thought he begged you not to leave. Well, he did. Right, so what's the problem then? Oh, because I can't just waltz back in. I never said you had to waltz. Look. When you storm out, you can't just waltz back in. All right, what if he asked you back? Well, then I'd bite his hand off. He's the luckiest man alive, eh? Even if you do kiss other boys. <laughs> You'll forgive her. Why should I? Told her not to go and she went anyway, stormed out. All oh, this was her fault in the first place and she storms out. Should have been me that stormed out, not her. But you wanted to come back out. Nice bed a bit. Bull's in your court, Lo. The cat's flat is locked. Hi, Steve. What's this with Michelle? Oh, she can tell you when I'm gone. What'd you get? She's a jacket. It's amazing. I've got buyer's remorse. Already? Second she handed me the receipt. You've got a thousand jackets. Why don't you take it back? What's the returns policy? Let me just try it again. I've told him never to go shopping without me. Right, that you lot? Yeah, I said too. Well, I hope the pair of you work it out because you're a cute couple. Used to be, but she can't be bothered. Why should I? Oh, hi, Steve. What's the latest with Michelle? Would it be bad for me if I run a book on it? Yes, very. Oh, well, what's the worst that can happen? At uh, prison. What? For smoking a doobie. And assaulting a police officer. And if it was one thing or another, she'd probably get away with it. It's the double whammy that's the trouble. Yeah, but they're going to take one look at her in a little chair. That is so patronising. I'd milk it for all it's worth, but it may. How do you get on? No dice. Is it my brother or my dad? Both. Well, I don't blame them. You can't call love sickness an illness. Uh, it's worse than tonsillitis, actually. Thank you very much. Might even go doctors. Have you tried medicinal cannabis? Why doesn't he love me anymore? Hey, can't make somebody love you. No, but I had it all mapped out and then 
like a magician whipping away the tablecloth. Poof, gone. She'll be going along to support her. Ah, oh, don't worry, she's got me and mum. Right. So I like the uh, cut. I'm just not too sure about the colour. He's got buyer's remorse. Uh, I had that with some jeans the other day. Yeah. So what happened? Well, it was too late. I got some grass stains on the plane in the park with Jack. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the label's still attached, man. I mean, I've got a window, right? So, uh, what time do they kick off? After. This is the magistrate's court, right? There's nothing to see. Uh, well, I'm finishing it too. You want to hold on, honey? I, I might have to, like, what, nip into town? I am not not going to support it. Just because you want to take a jacket back. It looks good. Yeah. The trick is not to buy so much in the first place. You know, I read an article that the average German owns 10,000 possessions. And full of paper clips you're off with her. <laughs> so how's she feeling? Yeah, pretty nervous. Yeah, so what, you think I should just keep it? Surely they'll use some common sense. Magistrate. Well, her shoulders it together. She's too smart to kick off. She's easily provoked, trust me. Oh. All right, Chief. Hey, uh, Kevin, what do you reckon this jacket? Honestly? Yeah, it's the right to pick Jacob. Oh, absolutely. Uh, just these, please, thanks. Okay. All right, let's get a waddle on. All right, well, I'll see you there. Hey, wait outside for me so I don't have to walk in on my own. <sighs> it's not a party. So is it the colour or the cut? Oh, sorry, Dev. I'm snowed under. Yeah. Oh. I was trying to talk to Gary about the mother of his child. What do they care about your jacket? Show every stick of furniture, is it? Well, not quite every stick. I mean, she's leaving the sofa and the bed. Ah, oh. well, that's nice of you. I bet it's comfy. So I've just come to get a few things, you know, a bit of cutlery and stuff like that. Well, don't take the new stuff. Take the stuff with the red handles. The ones we use for the dog food? Mm. She's been up all night reading the National Enquirer. Desperate to come home. Of course she's desperate to come home. The trick is to stay home in the first place. <laughs> well, you've never been naughty. Don't track me into it. Hey, is, um, as Steve said out to you? Not a diggy bird. Mm. She's definitely in the same bin, that's for sure. It can't last, though, can it? We need to be mad to let her go. Have you seen her? Uh, she's my third cousin. Mm. Is it, uh, is it all right if I grab a bowl, too? And a couple of plates and two cups? Two? Well, yeah, in case Maria comes round. <clears throat> well, you're gonna need some bed linen. And a pillar. Right. What are you doing here? We're late. Since when? Since I helped her score some weed. Oh, brilliant. Why weren't you outside? I thought you said you were going to wait for me outside. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Yeah, I didn't want to walk in on me. All right, I'm pair of you just be quiet. There she is. He was going to return it this afternoon, actually, but then Eric has gone to court to see Izzy, so we've got absolutely nobody to watch the shop. Anyway, there you go. How's that, Mrs. Bird? I bought all of the jacket ones. I never, ever wore it. Oh, honestly. My wardrobe is absolutely full of mistakes. What do you know? Sorry? I said, what do you know? Hey, hey, just a minute, Jess. About what? I know he did it, and so do you. Hey, can't you see we're busy? Thank you. What, are you in on this as well? In on what? David killed Callum. Sarah knows. She knows. Who else knows, eh? My dad is lying on the ground while his name gets ripped to shreds. All because of your twisted little husband. Yeah, OK, out, Jason. Well, out. get you, Kylie. If you're covering this up, they'll get a lot of you. Conspiracy to cover a crime. You'll all be an accessory. Thank you. Out. <laughs> And then what happened? Well, then she lost patience with the situation. Came at me full pelt. Because he wouldn't let me take my medication. Miss Armstrong, I'm going to have to ask you to remain quiet. Where exactly did she make contact? She rode over my right foot. And can you explain what injuries you sustained during this attack? 
a broken metatarsal. Are you up for it or not? I don't know, you know. I think I might feel a bit self-conscious. I mean, well, I'm glad enough you're watching. <laughs> well, Marie's up for it. Are you up for it, Sean? What? Belly dancing. Has it been like this all day? All day. Like I said, I am not fit for work. I should not be operating machinery. But my granddad wouldn't watch. Has he not got CCTV, though? Oh, don't be a wuss. Well, I can see you belly dancing. But you're right, in actual. Oh, come on, Sean. Snap out of it. It's not like flicking a switch. Yeah, well, nobody likes sulking, mm -hmm. is it? If you're so upset, why don't you win him back? I've already tried that. Well, try harder. <laughs> and you're Sean Tully. You'd be mad to let you go. I am, aren't I? Mm-hmm. And he would be, wouldn't he? Mm-hmm. You're right. I've given up too easily. I'm going to win him back. Well, not right now, you're not, darling. It's quarter past three. Mm -hmm. So, what's the latest with Michelle? <sighs> should put a sign up. Come on, mate, where are you going to find another one like her, eh? Am I right or am I right? Has he won the lottery? Six numbers and the bonus ball. Well, two, in fact. Do you know what she did to me behind me back? Look. She's learnt a lesson. She's made a mistake, she'll be loyal from now on. Just rattle the ball, she'll come running. Rattle the ball, it's a good job Anna's not here listening. Oh, here we go. So come on then, what's she forgotten? Family China, settee. She's not having the dog, if that's what this is about. Uh, no. Uh, for what it's worth, I've told him to take her back. Oh, Kevin Webster, voice of reason. Anyway, I've said my piece. So come on then, what is it? Um, she's found a spider in the flat. And? Well, she wants you to go and get it. Get it? Yeah, you know, get rid of it. How big is it? She said that it's like the size of that one that your mum found in the sink that time. You've only got one, huh? Steve, all you've got to do is grab it and take it outside. Well, look, uh, do you want me to go? Uh, no, she wants Steve to do it. Tell her I'll be over as soon as I can. Thank you. Sending a mate over to do a dirty work, it's like being in school, innit? Oi, stop harassing my family. You are? Just because your dad was a murdering scumbag, don't take it out on my wife, my gran, or anyone else in my family. What did you just say? You heard me. There's only one murdering scumbag round here, and that's you! Oh, all right. hey, 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 hey. Come on, David! David, get out! Cool. David, get out! Jason! Come on, back room! <sighs> Miss Armstrong. For the benefit of the courtroom, could you briefly explain your condition? Well, here comes the science. I've got Ellis Danlos syndrome type 3. It's a connective tissue disorder. My body tears and stretches, and my whole skeleton it dislocates really easily. Does this cause you physical pain? 24 hours a day. Will this improve over time? It's a degenerative condition, which means it'll get worse and worse, month after month, year after year. Old age will be a screen if I ever get there. Do you ever make this pain known to your friends, your family, your work colleagues? I try not to. It's hard for people to understand, to empathise, you know. <laughs> She's always mourning. Where do you work? I work in a factory making women's underwear. I'm a seamstress, part of a gang. So, in essence, you're always pretending not to be in pain? Constantly. Which is really... It's really hard. How well do you sleep? Ordinarily, I hardly sleep at all, which makes me irritable, especially when it comes to parenting. I've, I've got a son. He's three years old. Listen, where's your evidence? It's not my job to find evidence, Steve. The police should be doing that. Right, well, then give him time. Oh, what, when he swans off cutting air, yeah? Just suppose, for one second, that David didn't do it. Steve, my dad couldn't have done it. Why does everybody think he has? Because he didn't do himself any favours when he was alive, that's why. That doesn't mean he's capable of murder. Listen, the stuff my mum told me about his temper, you know, about you. About me? About how much he loved you. Steve, everybody loves the kids. Yeah, I know, but he swore he would take his revenge. And how do you know that? People talk, Jace. Look, all I'm saying is, don't rule it out. Uh, there's a copper in. 
Looking for Jason. But cocodamol and paracetamol aren't strong enough on their own. They can prescribe cannabis as a spray, but they said I couldn't have it because I haven't got MS. So where does that leave you? Here, in court. I've been left with no choice. I couldn't continue to suffer. What effect does cannabis have on you? Well, don't get me high, if that's what you mean. I don't have posters of Bob Marley on my walls. It levels me out. I use it in order to function as a parent, in order to cope at work, in order not to be in constant pain. My joint pit, oh, excuse the pun, but it almost completely disappears. The migraines I suffer from, well, they're far less frequent. I don't have to take ibuprofen or a thousand other chemical drugs. It also means I can sleep. On the evening in question, how are you feeling? Oh, I was desperate. Can I just say, I would rather the pain relief and all the legal trouble that is brought with it being arrested, sitting here today, the possibility of prison, I would rather that than abide by the law and be in constant agony. They say that drugs ruin some people's lives, but they don't ruin mine. They improve it significantly. For me, it is not recreational, it is essential. You've done this once already. Yeah, we didn't know what we were looking for. Well, I use all the gear in here, so... If anything's got my fingerprints on, don't start accusing me. Because I've told you before, I've done nothing wrong. Do your dad keep all his tools in here too? He used mine mostly. But are there any that might not be in here? You said previously that he went to work elsewhere. I mean, after he passed away, did any of his tools come into your possession? Number eight, Coronation Street. That's where you should be looking. It, man. Yeah, I preferred the blue. At the time of your arrest, you just allowed a known drug dealer into your house, off whom you were attempting to buy cannabis. Yes. We've heard how this known drug dealer, one Mark Randall, subsequently fled, and yet you told the officers in question that he was in fact a stranger who was simply helping you in with some shopping. I wanted them to go away. I needed to get to court to support my friend Gary, the father of my son. He was only up in court because he was trying to buy cannabis to help me with my pain relief. So he was up in court for attempting to buy cannabis too? We were trying to buy drugs, not mixing with armed robbers or mad axemen. You're trying to make us sound like smackheads. With whom you have much in common. With whom we have nothing in common. And in the middle of all this, a little boy. Yeah, in the middle of all this, a little boy who we're trying to do our best for. By inviting drug dealers into your home, by assaulting a police officer. He brought it on himself. And if he wound me up again, I'd do the same. So you don't regret your actions? It's a bit of weed for crying out loud. This is Western Europe. Aren't we supposed to be advanced, tolerant and liberal? I have just told you why I take it. I wish I didn't have to, but I do. And I will do whatever it takes to get hold of it until they change the law or you throw away the key. And if you do that, then God help me and God help me three-year-old son. Okay, okay, everybody calm down. No further questions. All she had to do was keep her cool. For the millionth time, I washed it in hot soapy water and then I put it back in Tony's bag. Right, definitely Tony's bag. You didn't put it on the side or give it to Jason. <gasps> David, you ask me this every night. The second I get into bed, you ask me this. You know what I did with that wrench. Are you 100% certain? Yes, 100%. Are you sure she can't hear us? What, under that thing? No chance. She's half deaf in any case. Right, OK, so Tony's are the only prints they should find on it. If they even find it. Well, they'll know what they're looking for now, won't they? They'll be turning that place upside down. What are the chances of them finding part of Callum's skull on it? I washed it really well in, like, a ton of washing-up liquid. 
Well, he never was one for shifting, was he? Oh, I hope they don't find her. I'd take my chances with the ranch. Yeah, well, that's easy for you to say. You never touched it. Babe, listen, this has landed in our laps. I mean, we just have to keep smiling, that's all. We're almost there. Yeah. What's with the bag? The uh, police want to know if my dad had any more tools. And I said no. But you were lying. Maybe he did do it. Maybe he didn't. But either way, the truth could be in there. Coronation Street's back in half an hour.